Welcome to Kaiju Sex Ed. Just kidding. In this video, we will answer one simple question. Were the Kong and Godzilla species able to reproduce? If they had reproductive organs, then where are they? We will use real-world and historical evidence to find out if these two monsters could potentially leave behind a successor. How and with what? So make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and pay close attention until the end as we reveal the, well, hidden secrets of these titans, uh, reproductive anatomy. 1. The Kong Species If you clicked on this video, chances are that you probably wondered, why doesn't Kong have a gigantic dong majestically swinging over the inhabitants of Skull Island? We have two or three answers to this. The first being obvious. Since these films are rated PG-13, chances are that the creature artists aren't going to even bother giving this guy any genitals. Maybe because it would be inappropriate for some kids to watch, and plus, imagine being the poor CG artist tasked with spending hours animating a swinging penis. But we imagine there must be more to this vague answer. And there is. One reason why Kong may not have had any visible reproductive organs is the fact that in the real world, male gorillas kind of share these same attributes. Their genitals are more or less out of sight, or small. Believe it or not, a gorilla's erect junk is about the size of your pinky, and their nutsack can weigh a mere 30 to 35 grams, which are ironically dwarfed by the chimp's massive 120 gram ball sack. So why is this big muscular animal equipped with a small reproductive organ? Scientists explain this with the theory that because gorillas don't mate nearly as much as chimpanzees, their genitals don't need to be as large as their horny counterparts. If your species doesn't mate much, you won't produce too much semen, and therefore your package doesn't need to be that big. Now back to the Kong species. In every single shot of Kong, we don't even get a glimpse of what is happening underneath here. But it's most definitely there. It's just really small. We know this since it's confirmed that the Kong species can multiply using the good old sexual reproduction, requiring both a male and a female. We really don't want to get into the deep details, but in essence, the fact that the Kong species were somewhat numerous in comparison to other titans was because of this. In the comic titled Skull Island Birth of Kong, we meet Kong's parents who leveraged the phenomenon of sexual reproduction to give birth to Kong. So, how big was it? This is for the few people who want more details. By looking at some of the proportions of real-life gorillas in comparison to their reproductive organs, we can estimate that Teen Kong carried something around this size. You can do the math. And make sure you share your calculations in the comments section with us. Before we move on to the next kaiju, we'd first like to take a small moment to talk about our sponsor, which will be presented by Joe. This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the premium global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. What's up guys, it's Joe. If you don't already know, Manscaped offers the best tools and liquid formulations for the big three order zones, your body, butt, and balls. So Manscaped just hooked me up with their fourth generation trimmer, the new Lawn Mower 4.0. So as one of the very first people to try this product, I'm pretty excited and I'm pretty blown away by the performance and details of it. So if we look closely, you can see the ceramic blades with skin safe technology. They help reduce nicks and cuts and can be easily replaced so that you can groom with confidence. So I have a really bad history with regular razors and clippers, so I took the liberty to put these to the test to see if they won't like rip your sack. And hey, it didn't bite into this, so I mean, this is pretty good. This thing is also cordless and waterproof, so you can trim in the shower, which makes it super convenient and easy to clean. I also like how you can charge your lawnmower with the brand new wireless charging system which uses an electromagnetic induction system to charge a premium lithium ion battery. Yeah I know, it's pretty darn awesome. So in addition to that, these tri-level power status indicators you see here will light up individually to show you the battery life. An overcharging and over discharging protection circuit helps enhance the battery performance and all of this helps you get up to 90 minutes 
on full charge. This upgraded lawnmower now includes a multi-function on and off switch that can engage a new travel lock feature, so you don't ever have to worry about it buzzing in your suitcase or draining your battery. This mower even allows you to customize your preferred hair length with four trimmer guard options. This brand also offers other products such as ball deodorant, ball toner, ball wipes, ball everything. So if you're ready to join the 2 million well-equipped men who trust this brand, make sure to go to manscaped.com and use promo code GOJI20 for 20% off and free international shipping. Your balls will thank you. A huge thanks to manscaped.com for sponsoring this video. And now I believe we're about to talk about Godzilla. Is that right, Steve? Yes, yes, that is correct. Up next, Godzilla. Two, the Titanus Gojira species. Please note that we will be specifically talking about the MonsterVerse incarnation of Godzilla, but that doesn't mean we can't grab evidence from past films. Throughout the G-Men's cinematic history, we have only seen Godzilla leave behind offspring a few times by laying eggs. One thing to note is that Godzilla doesn't really mate with other Godzilla's species. This is because almost every incarnation of Godzilla has been capable of breeding asexually. Put simply, asexual reproduction does not require a male and a female. Reproduction can be accomplished by just one individual. This concept has been seen in many other different universes, including the popular Jurassic World franchise. In the Netflix show Camp Cretaceous, we see the Scorpius Rex literally duplicate itself over a small period of time. The same can apply to our MonsterVerse Godzilla. An interesting take from this comes from some information about the use of Godzilla's character in GVK. Toho stated that Godzilla cannot die in GVK, but if he absolutely has to die, he must have left behind a successor. So let's pretend that Legendary made an outrageous decision to kill off Godzilla in GVK. They would have had to add an additional Gojira infant in this franchise, which proves that MonsterVerse Godzilla is in fact a titan that can reproduce asexually. Now let's get down to the juicy details. This form of asexual reproduction is known as parthenogenesis, which is basically a form of reproduction in which an egg develops into a clone of the parent without being fertilized. If Godzilla ever decides to leave behind his successor, he would just simply lay an already fertilized egg. This offspring will hatch and eventually grow to be an exact replica of the G-Man himself. In the real natural world, female Komodo dragons are also capable of doing this when needed. Having said this, it is now obvious that the G-Man does not have the need to carry reproductive organs. No dick, no balls, and probably no butthole since this guy feeds on radiation. In conclusion, both the Kong and Godzilla species are titans that share absolutely nothing in common when it comes to reproduction. Kong breeds like us, sexually, requiring a female and male to create offspring. Godzilla, on the other hand, does not require a mate and is capable of breeding using the power of parthenogenesis. No genitals needed. Godzilla has sure done some crazy stuff in the past. For a titan with no testicles, this guy sure does carry a huge pair. What other kaiju in this universe do you think reproduces like Godzilla? Do you think we will ever see these titans leave successors in the future? Let us know in the comments. For more fun info on your favorite kaiju, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.